Okay, let's go ahead and get started there, everybody. Welcome back to another Unreal Engine study session. I'm your host, Strange Road Jim, and today we're going to be getting back into um, the... We're going to be continuing on with the sound attenuation. Um, we're getting close to the end on it, uh, and then obviously we have, you know... A couple more to do concerning the sound. I mean, this has been a really long journey so far, uh, just concerning the sound itself. But at the same time, it makes sense, right? You know, sound is pretty much, you know, necessary for pretty much any game that you play. Uh, pretty much. Not every, but... I mean, music, sound effects... Um, speech, um, um, you know, just, um, ambience. I mean, you know, whatever you need in the game to kind of make it, you know, have a little bit more, um, life to it. Okay. Uh, if there was just no sound whatsoever, then, um, you know, then you would have to add more to, you know, you'd have to add more to it, um, and, you know, to make it, you know, uh, you know, uh, if you had a... If you had a game with adding any kind of sound to it, then you'd you'd have a lot of confusion from some people, you know, because they'd be like, "On, you know, where's the music? Where, you know, this is this is kind of creepy. You know, where's the sound effects?" They'd be like trying to check their volume settings and stuff like that, and go, "Wait, you know, why is there no volume or you know whatever?" So, it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, sound is definitely important when it comes to games. I mean, there's there's no question about that. Okay. Uh, you'd have to have something really interesting if you didn't have any kind of sound, right? So, so the fact that it took and that it's taken quite a long time to get through the working with audio section isn't too much of a surprise. So, um, we're getting to the very end of the sound attenuation section. We just got two major sections here left to go. Uh, concerning the attenuation occlu uh, occlusion and the attenuation reverb send. So uh, we'll see if we can get through all of that today. I see Blackheart's in the stage, so let me go ahead and get him in so that you can all hear him. Hello. Hey How there, Blackheart. Not too bad. Yourself? I'm doing okay. Okay, how's the heat? Oh, it's hot, all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know, just, just what? You know, six more months and it'll start cooling down for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully sooner. Uh, yeah. I don't need the heat too much. <clears throat> yeah. I'm actually kind of the opposite. I actually don't mind the heat too much. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't necessarily want to be out in, like, the direct sunlight with the sun beating down on me kind of thing. But, you know, um, I typically um, I typically like more, you know, warmer climates than, than cold. <laughs> or at least that's, that's me. <laughs> so, uh, hate the cold. Don't mind snow, but I hate the cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, uh, let's get into the attenuation reverb send, shall we? Yep. All right. So, this section defines the relationship between the sound's distance from the listener and the amount of reverb that is applied to the sound. This assumes you have either defined a default reverb setting with within the world settings or the sound uh, without an audio volume with a reverb effect applied. And the sound's sound class settings allow for reverb to be applied. You can control the method using used to determine the reverb send level. 
the amount of the sound to send to the reverb effect, reverb min max send level, and how this might vary with the sound's distance from the listener, reverb min max send distance. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all the settings there. You have the you know the you know check and see you know do you want the reverb enabled? There you go. You know do you want you know what kind of send method do you want on it? Uh, which I'm assuming the the linear is going to be very much like the you know the graphs above. We'll we'll see more about that and obviously the min max distance overall. So that's going to be interesting. All right. Um, enable reverb send. This property is used to enable or disable the reverb send system. If true, the sound will be processed by the assigned reverb effect according to the settings defined below. If false, the sound will not be processed by reverb and will be completely dry. That's a weird way of saying it, but sure. Um, you know, so um, now this is going to, this is a little interesting in that um, you could have, I could see this as a potential, um, like you could you could potentially have a lot of like confusion on your staff, for example. Like if you have some people like, hey, I'm gonna create this reverb class that will enable reverb, and then you have this that will basically in the sound attenuation that will basically say, no, we don't want reverb. So it's like I could see. Um, potential where it's like you know if you're not if you're not careful you could have a lot of like miscommunications like you know this particular part is supposed to have reverb but someone didn't enable it so there is none so um, so it's one of those things where it's like you're gonna really need to be careful with uh, your settings it's it feels like if you're not careful you could potentially have uh, conflicting settings that you know will uh, you know obviously if you say you know if you turn off one of the reverbs kind of thing then I obviously you know it's like okay well no reverb whatsoever whatsoever I guess you know I don't know um, I could see it'd probably be good if they actually had something where you could um, have, like if you enable like your sound class to have reverb, right? Um, that it kind of cascades through everything that that sound class is like associated with. So everything knows that it has reverb. But I don't know, you know, I don't know if they did anything like that or not, but um, I would imagine not. And therefore, <laughs> hmm. if you had like different, you know, sound engineers or something like that, you know, I don't know. Uh, re reverb send method. Okay, so this property defines the method used to determine how much th of the sound is sent to the reverb effect. So you can have the amount of, and linear, the amount of the sound sent to reverb effect will be determined by interpolating between the values defined in the min-max send levels over the distances defined by the min-max distance values. You can have a custom curve. The amount of the sound sent to the reverb will be determined by the curve you had defined over the distances defined in the min-max distance values. Or you can do the manual. The amount of sound sent to a reverb will be defined by a single constant value. This doesn't change relative to distance, so it's probably most useful for non-specialized ambient style sounds rather than point source 3D sounds. Okay. Um, I like the fact that they, um, you know, they give a you know a slight example here. Probably most useful for non-specialized ambient style sounds. So, so I like I like that little touch that they did there. Um, 
but here's the thing. I'm uh, is the send method not going to touch upon the other curves that are you know up above, like the logarithmic, the inverse, the log reverse, natural sound? It doesn't touch upon any of those. Mm. It seems in that way. Yeah. You would think that it should, but I mean, uh, you know, I, w I would imagine that, you know, like logarithmic or inverse would be also kind of applied to the reverb, of, you know, send method, but, you know, I don't know. Um, they didn't, yeah, or. Maybe they're just kind of saying, okay, you know, these are the common ones or something like that. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe it still includes those other curves, but we'll have to see later, you know, if we want to kind of check that out. So, yeah. in the engine itself. So, okay, reverb min send level. This property is only available when using the linear send method. And determines the amount of reverb to apply to the sound when the distance to find an amend distance property. Typically, you would use lower values here so that there appears to be more direct uh, than reverberant sound when close to the sound source. Okay. Um, once again, they're really hitting home on the linear send method on that, uh, which kind of makes me think that maybe they don't have the logarithmic or anything along those lines. So, hmm. well, let me move on. Uh, this, yeah. this property is only available when using the linear send method and determines the amount of reverb to apply to the sound when at the distance defined in the max distance property. Typically, you would use higher values here so that there appears to be more reverb than direct sound when far away from the sound source. Okay. Um, any comments so far? Anything that you want to mention at all? Mm, not, not that I can think of. Okay. Yeah, just want to make sure, man. Oh, also, um, did you get any kind of like comments or anything like that on any of your videos at all? I wanted to check. Not yet. Okay. You know, I just, you know, uh, just want to ask, uh, haven't received anything myself, but, you know, now, again, for anybody that's watching right at this moment in time, you know, you, you know, we're going to be coming, you know, especially in this audio section, there's going to be a lot of information that we don't really understand. We've already covered it in multiple videos. We're going to be like, going, uh, I have no idea what this is all about. Um, you know, both Blackheart and I. Um, so, if you know the material and you're willing to help us out, please, you know, feel free to, like, leave a comment um, or come to us directly, you know, chat with us, you know, during these live streams and, um, you know, give us the information there. And, obviously, we'll be sharing it with each other. So, you don't necessarily need to go to each of our videos but, I mean, still kind of welcome that as well if you want to. So, um, so yeah. Uh, anything else that you'd like to add to that there, Blackheart? Or... Mm, no, I can't think of what I could add to that. Okay. You just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, want to make sure that I hit all the... Uh, you know, all the points that needed to be hit. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, reverb minimum distance. This property defines the distance from the sound source that will correspond with the minimum send level when using the linear send method and the lowest value of your custom curve. Uh, reverb max distance is the property defines the distance from the sound source that will correspond to the max send level when using the linear ascend method and the highest value of your of your customer curve. Now, every time I look at these min and max distances, I look back at that one picture that they had above with the one guy like standing outside of like two spherical um, 
not, well, maybe not spherical, but circle radius around an object kind of thing. You know, one with a, like a little green radius around it and another with a little red. You know, and it's basically saying, hey, here's the green is the minimum, the red is the maximum kind of thing. So if you're standing outside of it, you're not going to hear the reverb or the sound or whatever. You know, you're beyond that area where the sound is, you know, reaching your ears. So. Of course, you can change those settings depending on, um, you know, maybe maybe you have something that has a little bit more in tune hearing, but you know. So whenever I see like minimum, maximum, this is kind of the representation that I kind of think about, you know, really. So just just saying. All right. So we're on our last section here, finally, <laughs> the attenuation occlusion. So this section defines how to build the occlusion system will behave in order to simulate the effect of sound being reduced in high frequency content and or amplitude as a result of an object being between the source and the listener. You can control how the engine will check for obstructions as well as severity of low pass filtering and volume reduction should an obstruction be found. Excuse me. You can also change the speed that as a result, any changes to the sound will occur. Okay, so enable occlusion. This property allows you to enable or disable the inbuilt occlusion system. If true, the inbuilt system will check for obstructions and apply the settings defined below. If false, the inbuilt system will be turned off, and unless you're using a third-party plugin, defined in plugin settings below, your sounds will not emulate occlusion. Okay. Uh, weird. It's, I mean, it's it's not wrong, but it's a little weird of how they're kind of putting that. So. Um, okay. Occlusion trace channel. Uh, this property determines which trace channel will be used to determine whether there is an obstruction between the source and the listener. The default here is invisibility, which would probably work fine for most purposes, essentially. If the object has collision set up and, and its properties, then it will work with the setting. If you want to exclude any specific objects from the occlusion system so that they didn't form obstructions to your sounds, you can do this by setting their collision response property for the channel you're using, for example, visibility, to ignore. You, can, you may have to change the collision preset property to custom to access this. Uh, this may have implications on the correct functioning of other systems, so do this with care. Me, it may be better to set up a custom audio trace channel. Okay. Um, this is. Uh, hmm. I'm a, I'm a little concerned about what they mean by visibility, right? Because um, are they basically saying that if you can see it, the sound will be active? Or is it along the lines of um, you will turn, you know, if the object is like rendered in, for example, like you know, you have the or how the sound would perceive the object. If well, uh, how should I put it? Like, if the sound source would see that object as at something it can collide with or not. So that's this really doesn't exactly mean character that you can see it with your character or something. So occlusion is if the sound detects that there's something in the way. 
it, it sees okay there is uh say a wall right here i can't go through this but if that sound doesn't see that wall then it'll just go through it hmm um I guess. Hey there, you are. How you doing there? Welcome to the channel. How's your day been? Um. Hmm. In case of southern prison, you have to determine whether or not the sound source will see that said object exists. Yeah. Now that's, or that's... even if it's decent, it'll affect it in any way, shape, or form. Oh, it's just the weird... Yeah, it, it feels a little weird as though it's like, you know, the... You know, when I when I see visibility, I think, you know, okay, we're, we have the human character looking at the, the object in question, but obviously that that's probably not what they're not the case. That, that's not what they're, they're that's what not what they're talking about um it's you know um the other thing that i can think of is you know that um the the object in question that is you know uh generating synth sounds is hasn't been officially rendered in um you know, because you can have that. You can have like you, like um, like say you want to have a um, like a map system that is um, um, like generated on the fly. Like you, you don't want it to have. You don't. You don't want to have like a map that is. Um, pre-built or something like that you wanted to have like a map system that is um you know auto-generated right um so you you know you might not necessarily know exactly where that particular sound source might come in from so therefore like you know if it's not yet created at that particular time would you still potentially hear that sound right um, so, you know, technically if it's not visible yet, hence not created, so therefore, you know, would, you know, would it kind of mean that way as well? You know, I don't know. It's, I don't think so. I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I, you, you're, you're most likely, you know, correct in this. I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards your, uh, to what you're saying about how the, you know, if the sound, you know, sees some kind of object that it can collide with, like the sound wave will go, you know, like it sees a wall and, you know, it determines whether or not it, you know, that sound can actually collide with said wall, you know, you know, does, is that the visibility that it's referring to, you know, um, you're, you know, that's, that's most likely what they're referring to here in this particular case. Um, yeah, I do feel like it, it's that way. Yeah. Um, I'm just covering all my bases here, though. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so, um, the, um, Um, the fact that you have to, the, what I'm, um, the response property, um, however, that, you know, it, you're, you're looking at that and you're like going, okay. Um, you know, are they referring directly to the, 
objects itself that are, you know, potentially, you know, the the collision object, or is it the response pro property of the sound source itself that will basically say, hey, I want you to ignore all collision, you know, every single collisions, we're going to ignore it, you know, everybody's going to hear the sound no matter what. Or... Yeah, this is depending on how both are configured, how both a collision and the sound are configured. Yeah. I, you know, one one would imagine, right? Because, um, you know, if you have a sound source that, you know, you're basically saying, hey, I want you to be heard throughout the entire level, say, like, music, then, you know, you pretty much do, what, probably end ignore, most likely. Um, I guess, maybe, you know, I don't, again, I don't know really on that one, but, um, um, whereas, you know, the objects would, you know, you might have something that is like, you know, oh yeah, we, you know, um, you can either, you know, any sound that passes through it is, you know, like you have a net, well, that's not going to block sound so you can completely ignore you know any kind of collision with the net right you know um so you know there's no there's no problem with that but if you have like a solid reinforced wall that has like you know sound protections on it and stuff like that then <laughs> you're probably going to have like visibility being like you know really high and not allowing any sound whatsoever to go through right so i don't know um uh, let's go ahead and move on. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Occlusion low pass filter frequency. This property defines the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter that will be applied if the system detects an obstruction between the sound source and the listener. The lower the values used here, the more extreme and noticeable the filtering effect will be. Um, now, if I remember correctly, what was it? Low pass. Low pass filter was. We saw that before. Oh God, what was it again? Um, we were seeing it previously about. Um, uh, what was it again? It was, it was, it was fairly recently, um, air absorption, there it was. So, um, so I guess this is talking about, um, how much the sound gets absorbed by the air then so hmm. i guess so i don't know it's the only thing that i can think of right at this moment in time uh unless again unless the low pass filter is you know applies to other things besides besides air absorption you know again we don't really know so, um, all right. Um, occlusion volume attenuation. This property defines how the scaling value to apply to the sound's volume if the sound systems, uh, if the system detects an obstruction between the sound source and the listener. The lower the values used here, the more extreme and noticeable the volume reduction will be. Um, Okay, so if there is a obstruction of some of some kind, say like a wall, um, how how, how much, much of the sound do you want it to obstruct? Right. How much will you reduce down the overall volume if the walls, you know, um, 
you know, in the way, right? Like if you if you have like a wall and a door or something like that, how much sound will just be dampened by that? So um, if you have a really low value, apparently, like if you have like, you know, 0 0.00001, then, you know, you're probably not going to hear any volume, apparently. So, um, but again, I don't know how, you know, what their what their scaling is in terms of the overall values are, you know. So, I mean, if it, you know, does it like use percentages or does it use like, you know, just a whole lot of digits? And if so, what's like the maximum number that you can put in there that so that, you know, there's no loss whatsoever, you know, I don't know. Um, occlusion interpolation time. Uh, this property defines the transition time for the occlusion effect as a sound alternates between being obstructed and not obstructed. The lower the values here, the more responsive the system is able to be, but if depending on your settings, this can produce some fairly extreme behavior. It's a good idea to experiment with different time values to find what works best for different situations. Hmm. It would be kind of like that transition between being behind something and then being exposed. Yeah. Like say you suddenly open a door, like do you want the sound to start to be sudden or do you want to be subtle? Uh, oh, the volume goes up. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, so, I mean, if you're if you're walking down the hallway, kind of a thing, you know, obviously, you know, you wouldn't necessarily be getting hit with a lot a lot of obstruction. So, you'd eventually hear the uh, sounds as you're getting closer. But that's not the point of the the obstructions here. Um, it's it's more along the lines of um, if you are, say, like in a, you know, a soundproof room and you open up the door, well, that breaks the soundproof settings and therefore you're going to be hit with, like, all the, all the sounds outside said room. So, like, suddenly, almost instant instantaneously. So, um, unless you... Unless you try to like open the door up slowly, but even then you'd have to determine, you know, do you still hear the sounds like, you know, perfectly like natural, like, you know, you know, it doesn't matter if you're trying to open up the door slowly. As soon as you, you know, open it up, you know, that sound enters no matter what, you know, so, I don't know. but obviously that's, you know, depending on the game, <laughs> so. Um, use complex collision for occlusion. This property allows you to enable and disable the use of complex collision, collision for the obstruction system. By default, the system will use the an object's simple collision to check for obstructions as this is significantly cheaper in terms of resources. However, if the objects in your level have complex shapes, then you may find that this produces unconvincing results. For example, sounds may be flagged as obstru uh, obstructed, even though they are not. In the screenshots below, you can see the difference between an object's simple and complex collision models, and how if the listener was towards the bottom of the object, they could produce the, the problem highlighted above. Uh, King, uh, King Joe. How you doing? I'm doing a okay. And thank you for the follow there. Nice. Um, so obviously, you know, as you can see, the the top screenshot has, you know, isn't as, um, you're not really caring too much about, you know, the complex shapes or anything along those lines. But I mean, if you're like behind this table, 
you know, and and the sound isn't hitting you at all, then you be and you might be looking at this going, what what are you talking about? There's holes in this table, blah blah blah. You know, I should be hearing this, per, you know, perfectly fine. You know, right? Um, right. Whereas. Uh, the stream's doing well so far. Nice. Um, and then of course, of course, the the bottom picture here with the you know the complex, um, you know, uh, you know collision, you know checks here. You know, you know they they basically you know covered the entire table, you know. So obviously, if you're behind it, you know you could still potentially hear from from the holes. Um, but obviously, you know this is significantly more in terms of resources spent to try to make sure that you are hearing everything. So, so yeah, you know. So this would be, you know, the top would be for, you know, lower graphic settings or, you know, lower settings overall. And then the, the bottom would be like, hey, you have like a beast of a computer that can handle anything. <laughs> so. Yeah, it all depends on what sort of situation you want to use it. Like if you do want to be able to like hide behind something and affect the sound, then yeah, go with a complex. If it's somewhere where you really don't need it, then yeah, you can just go with a simple. I mean, true, um, but it, you... it will all depend on how you intend to use it in the scenario it's in. Well, you also have to consider and consider the like if you're if you're designing the game um, that you might want to have like both of these, but you determine you know you determine which one of those is used based off of the settings that the player chooses. So like, you know, if you want someone to basically say, hey, I want, you know, high graphics, high everything, high sound, blah, 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 then obviously, you know, you go with yeah, the, the bottom. The player decides that the, right. how we program it will be determining this regardless of the graphics setting. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is this um, is this, this is, is audio, game but engine, uh, what we're starting, at. we're starting to make a game, not play a game. Yeah, indeed. But I mean, like I said, you know, we're um... we're still learning how sound works with the Unreal Engine. Okay, you're talking to your, your uh, chatter. No worries. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like you know, um, you know, the settings themselves might determine what, you know, what the player might actually hear, right? So, you know, if the player picks the lowest settings, you know, overall, then you know, hey, they hide behind this table, they're not going to hear anything. But if they pick the higher settings, then they might actually hear something, you know. Um, it all depends on on what their computer or you know what the console can handle, right? So um, it also determines, <laughs> you know, it might also you know fall on us as well as to whether or not we actually want to do something as complex as what you know that bottom image. We might like look at this and we go, yeah, we don't really care about that. You know, if someone's hiding behind this table, blah, you know, it doesn't matter, you know. Yeah, so. if the situation doesn't impose for that, then why bother investing in resources you're not really needing? Exactly. So. Um, okay, attenuation plugin settings. Uh, this section allows you to define any settings made available to you by the developers of any third-party plugins you choose to use for either specialization, occlusion, or reverb. If you're using the native built-in systems, then this section will be empty. So, and there's all the different... Thank you, the mini. There's all the other uh, settings being added there, so there we go. Yep. And that... Yeah all the different plugin settings but it's like okay well 
they didn't really add much here, but I mean, it, it all depends. I guess it depends on the, uh, the plugin that you add to it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it all really depend on what sort of game we end up making. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the plugin obviously will, you know, if we even want to use a plugin, you know, then that will go, go in there, but you know, that, yeah. So we'll see. Um, okay, so we have the sound cue editor next. Um, it's a fairly sh short-ish section. Shall I con uh, shall I continue on it, or do you want to like maybe save it for tomorrow? Uh, so the next part is also sound cue. We might as well do it for tomorrow. We have the sound cue editor and sound cue reference, so all that's left. So might as well leave it for tomorrow. Well, don't uh, don't forget that we also have the sound cue editor UI to look at as well. Um, if you expand out the sound cue editor, there's that section as well. Although, it doesn't really look all that much. It just ha how to navigate, like, what part is what on the UI, like, to yeah. understanding the UI itself. It's not exactly what it's actually for and all what it does. So it's more on the initial part. Of, hey, this is what the sound cue editor is for. Yeah. Doesn't really describe anything, really. <laughs> device profiles. <laughs> Brings up the device profiles in a separate window. You don't say. Yeah, wow, I never... Mean... <laughs> I never would have thought about that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we can skip the UI once. It's like it, we're looking at it right on the very first image of the sound cue editor. Yeah. I'm, I I want to know what it does, how it works, like what does each thing does. Like I can already navigate the, the UI pretty easily. Yeah. I just want to know what am I clicking on. Yep. You know, the the fact that it's like, you know, hey, it brings up the debug tool. Well, great. What does the debug tool do? You know, <laughs> you're you're not really helping me here with this whole brings up a debug tool in a separate window. That tells me nothing. <laughs> you know, what is the purpose of the debug tool concern of the sound cue editor, their game <laughs> or the, the, the in their documentation? Unreal. Please, please explain this to us. <laughs> You know, um, yeah. you know, you're not really, you know, great. It opens up in a separate window, uh, but you know, what is it all about? You know, that's, that's what, you know, that's my, my, my take on it, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, okay, we'll, we'll save this for tomorrow. Um, hopefully they'll cover a little bit more of it but it seems like they probably won't well, it's not very maybe on reference we're gonna have more information on sound cue than we will on the editor oh reference yeah, is reference a... is massive yeah reference is indeed a very long um yeah, a uh, long web page you know, they're they're including a lot of properties in here, so so there's going to be a lot of kind of going over what each property does and so on and so forth. So yeah, this I don't will even be. I know if we live in cover all of it. This is big. Mm -hmm. I'm still going down. Like, I'm scrolling <laughs> down, and I'm still going. Mm -hmm. so uh, there's the bottom. Yep. Finally. I mean, just, I, I, and you know, I'm just looking at the attenuation node properties and oh my God, so many descriptions, you know, so many uh, properties, uh, you know, actually is associated with it. But at the same time, um, this is also kind of ref uh, the, referring to what we just covered, which is like attenuation li listener focus, uh, attenuation error absorption. Uh, attenuation specialization so I mean they're they're kind of um, 
showing like hey this is this is where you can you know see all this you know that you just pre previously covered so so we might you know we might need to and we you know we could probably skip over quite a bit of it maybe you know maybe uh, because a lot of it's you know stuff that we've already kind of covered a bit but you know but we'll have to see uh, but yeah send it to innovation tomorrow uh yeah. probably uh or yeah sound cue editor tomorrow uh which probably won't take us too long to get through that um it's a fairly small uh web page of content uh unless of course something like you know strikes us as odd and we're gonna like discuss it a little bit more but uh we'll um, end up doing so that we are not sound engineers like yeah. Some things we're probably not going to understand at all. Yeah, but I mean, if there's something that kind of goes, oh, wait, that's what it can do? Hmm, okay, interesting. Then, you know, but obviously, we'll we'll see about that tomorrow. So, uh, so for those of you that are um, here watching us right at this moment in time, you know, um, stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, you know, close down our section of the Unreal study session for today. Um, so um, I'm going to be moving on to, oh, I mean, I've already uploaded all the videos earlier, so I'm probably going to try to see what I can do about working on my old website, or at least maybe trying to get back into it a little bit. Uh, in the next hour um, and then I will be going on to the um, um, Lego movie video game after that uh, uh, Blackheart you have food afterwards but yeah, later on tonight down the stream I'll go get you eat something and I'm gonna play some Genshin Impact later on tonight yep yep and right. roughly an hour or so yeah, indeed. Um, so for anybody that's kind of curious as to what, you know, what's going on, you know, if you're watching my channel right now, you can go check my description for Blackheart's channel. And, you know, I'm pretty sure he has the same for me as well, uh, if I remember correctly. So, um, so we, you know, you can, you know, if you're interested in seeing what we're playing, there you go. <laughs> Um, check our description for um, various links that we have down below um, links that help us out directly you know the content creators um, there might be some links down there that might help you out um, you know like you know uh, I like to try to promote you know team robot and team robots kind of try you know built around the idea that everybody helps each other out in whatever way we can, right? So, um, so that's available if anybody's interested in that. Um, if you are sound engineers and you understand everything that we're kind of going over on this Unreal, uh, you know, studying, uh, Unreal Engine studying, you know, please feel free to, you know, give uh, comments about it, you know, help us out with some of the topics that we're not really understanding very well. Uh, we welcome it. Um, obviously, if, you know, we, uh, you know, we might occasionally get the, you know, uh, oh my God, you guys are complete idiots. And well, that's not really helpful. Um, but I mean, let's face it. It's like explain it to us, or maybe give us links to someone that might have explained it with examples. Yeah, yeah, that that would be um, very appreciated. Um, not only would it help us, but it you know could potentially help out someone else. So, um, so we encourage that at least be be more constructive. Um, let's see. Um, anything else? Is there anything that you might want to state? You know, you want to promote anything on your end there, Blackheart? 
Uh, I already took care of progress before I joined your stage. Right. Well, I'm just saying, you know, you can do it again if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's good to do like at the very beginning, at the at the very end. You never know. So. Probably before I close down, I'll do it again. All right then. All right. Well then, I'll leave you to it. So you have yourself a good time. I enjoy Genshin. Enjoy your food. And I will uh, catch up with you again tomorrow. All right. Bye. Bye. And that's it there, folks. We're going to go ahead and close on down for our... Um, um, Unreal section. I want to thank you all for joining on the session. Hopefully uh, it was uh, enlightening. Again, you know, please, you know, um, we welcome any kind of uh, help along those lines. But like I said, you know, feel free to check out the, the description. You know, there's social media, there's uh, links that help us out, you know, the Patreon, Throne, and various others. Um, there's links that might help you out, you know, such as Team Robot, um, the application page there. Uh, so look into that if you're interested. And um, we, I have also included the playlist for this Unreal study session in the description as well so if you want to see you know everything that we've discussed so far concerning the unreal engine and our process to get to you know making a clone of a game and making a you know a full game ourselves then uh then you know keep an eye out for um you know keep an eye on that playlist because we'll keep on going as you know as much as we can you know given circumstances so uh but that's it for for now so thank you very much for watching i right, appreciate it hope i catch you next time but until then take care have a good night stay healthy stay safe and i'll catch you next time